Party. My name is Tom Carroll. I am the chairman of the Lehigh Valley Tea Party and I along with the board welcome you here to our December meeting. Merry Christmas. We are truly blessed to be here together as a family tonight and I'm so pleased to, to be here tonight. We're going to have a good night. So Andrew's going to join us, um, lead us in prayer tonight here. Let us bow our heads. God, we ask for forgiveness when we as individuals have failed you. We thank you for all your blessings, especially the board members of the Tea Party who lead these great meetings. For all of our members and guests, we thank you for them being here this evening. For those who are not able to be here this evening. And Jesus, as we come upon your birthday at the end of this month, we wish you a happy birthday. We ask you for guidance and wisdom and the courage to continue to fight on. We pray for President Trump, who goes through so much to support us and to allow us to live in a country that is free. We thank all of our military, and we ask you to bless us during this holiday season. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> So if you could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you could remain standing for the National Anthem.
So the membership cards will be mailed the first week of January. Membership forms are available on the table, so if you haven't filled them out already, fill them out, and, or you can go online and you can take care of it that way as well. Are right, the first time attendees here today? Please raise your hand. Thank you. You're welcome. We have some forms on the tables that talk about uh, that said first time attendees. If you could fill that out, it just gives us an idea of what brought you here and then maybe what we can do to make sure that you come back. So um, fill that out and welcome and thank you for coming tonight, as always. And we will do the 50 50 raffle at the end of the night, as I said. Mo and Tom are back there and taking care of that, as always. The gun raffle, uh, Annie Ritter's in the back there and Go get your gun raffle tickets from her when we have the break. All right, so this is Melissa's uh, project here. She's glowing in the back there. So you can see we're selling these tickets for this tree. It's right there. And uh, $5 tickets, and we'll draw that at the end of the night as well. Am I correct, Tom, on that one? I got it right. <laughs> There's lottery tickets on the tree, so maybe maybe one of them's a winning ticket. So buy those tickets, and we'll draw that tonight as well. And as, as always, Andrew in the back selling the cannolis for the Boy Scouts, so not, there's not enough food here, but brownies and cannolis. All right, this is good stuff here. As always, Melissa's in the back with the merchandise. Also in stock, the Trump uh, long sleeve and the Betsy Ross shirts. And it's a good time to buy Christmas presents for people, so think about that when you're here tonight. Christmas special, Lawrence Mead, and uh, the Judge Janine book, fifteen dollars each, or two for twenty-five. So uh, help us uh, get rid of those books, and they're a great Christmas uh, present. They've been signed, or at least the Judge Janine books have been signed. We have the LBTP chips in the back, as always. So if you don't have enough cash, you know, go ahead and take care of that and use them, as always. And don't forget about the donation buckets on the table. Member chip and treasurer report. Total members now 2,559. So that's a fantastic number of people. Every year we have set goals for ourselves when the board meets. And uh, we set a goal uh, last year of having paid members at, uh, I forget what the number was, and we far exceeded it. We set a goal above that from last year, and we far exceeded it this year. So we're going to set an even higher goal for 2020. And I have no doubt that because of our goal and our mission to get President Trump re-elected, and that will be our sole mission for the next uh, 12 months here, 300 and however many days are left, I'm sure our membership is going to grow tremendously. So looking forward to that in the new year as well. And it's obviously time to renew your 2020 membership, so that will help us get started with all the efforts we're going to do. We need you to get on board, pay your dues, and get that in order. Forms are on the table, renew online. Bank balance, $38,779.44. So that's a healthy uh, balance that we're carrying now, and we have a lot that we're going to accomplish with all that that we've done here. And we also have something in new line here. We also have available credit of $9,543, and just wanted to make sure that the membership was aware of that as well, so that's put forward there. So, as always, wow. There she is. We'll talk about the tickets for that. Good evening. And this is one room that I can say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> It's almost more acceptable than the prior eight years. Has anybody noticed that? Okay, so let's keep it up. So today I was on the phone with a business call, and I know the guy's Christian, so I said to him, Merry Christmas. And when I was in business, I used to teach my employees to smile when they answered the phone, because I truly believe you can feel it, you can hear it, and you can sense it. 
And I could sense his smile, and he gave me a great big Merry Christmas back. So, we live in a country that has freedom, and we can say Merry Christmas, and our country has been founded on religious values, and I think most of us share that here. Whether we go to church or not, I know we all believe. So, we support our soldiers, and a lot of people have sent Christmas cards. We have some groups, Girl Scouts, um, library people, um, um, Andrew's raising his hand. Andrew, I didn't know you now are, I know you were a scout, but I didn't know you were a Girl Scout. Um, which, by the way, his troop have come a couple of times to help us pack our packages, and they're coming on Friday. Um, and I send an invitation to any of you that would like to see Blair in my little office uh, of support the troops. Where all your items go and how it works, you're welcome. Just contact us. We're in Easton. Uh, it's really a storage unit, which we have made an office, and it's got a little heat and whatever, and that's where all your donations go, and that's where we pack, and that's where we spend half of our lives. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying, we have never once gotten a return Christmas card from a soldier that said, ripped up that said they didn't want it. So, continue with your cards. We get inundated at Christmas time. So, those of you, we have stationery in the back, write a letter of thank you. We support you. I also have some children's coloring pages. So at Christmas time, when you have those kids annoying you while you're trying to cook or do something or whatever, they've got too much sugar or too much presents, um, pick up some of these. You can photostat them as well, give them some crayons, and say, here, thank a soldier. So I have some of those in the back. And on that note, I'd like to do what I always do and send you one of our, re read you one of our recent thank yous. Good afternoon, Blair and Valerie Ferguson. I sincerely appreciate your package and all your company does for us, U.S. servicemen abroad. Enclosed in this letter is a list of personnel on my ship. We have two females in our section, and we will be here until April of 2020. My unit is very large, and thus I have elected and conclude my Marines' names by your request because we're always, always looking for soldiers' names. We have plenty of supplies, so any of you who know anybody who are looking for names, uh, just come see us. Um, our, my overall unit is called Special Purpose Marine Ground Task Force Crisis Response Central Command 192, or SPMAGTF for short. <laughs> what a very long name. The SMAGTF is like the 9-11 Pride Force for all of the Central Command. We can deploy Marines at any moment of notice to the port of the Middle East for force protection. My section provides the logistics planning and sustainment of this force. As a group, we travel quite frequently. However, we live out of Kuwait, and any packages we receive here, we will eventually get. We thank you very much for your continued support and Semper Fidelis. Lieutenant First John Thomas Buckner. So I thank you all who have contributed, those that have asked. We are looking for men's deodorant, always drink additives. Our new thing is uh, I guess they've come up in the world, everybody's looking for K-cups, but they're expensive. I'll take the instant uh, little, like the drink straws, they make the little packages of 10 coffee. They're always looking for coffee, just like the rest of us. So, I thank you very much. God bless all of you. Have a very Merry Christmas. God bless our country. God bless our president. And God bless our troops. Thank you. Thank you. And as I've warned Tom before, you give me a microphone and I might deviate from the plan. So I'm just going to say a couple words here before I get to the next slide. 
because a lot of people came up to me and asked me to uh, address this, so I'm not going to address it in any great detail, but there was a lot of questions about the challenge to the election that should have happened in Northampton County, and just so everyone knows, it did not. It was um, would have cost probably about $50,000, and we were working with everybody we could think of to try to work together to get that to work because the overwhelming disaster of that election is going to translate to an absolute nightmare this coming year and it should have been filed but we could not bring the resources necessary to fire, file an appropriate challenge. So we might address it a little more later but in terms of that, that did not happen. But I do want to just thank everybody that helped so much for that election. We accomplished a great deal in that building of a team um, that we're going to We'll, we'll put forward. On the night of the election, the first thing I said was, and this is well before we knew what was going to happen, that regardless of the, the outcome, that the next day was the beginning of the, uh, the uh, campaign for 2020. And just as an announcement tonight, and maybe on the slides, Tom might get mad at me, but <laughs> we have two people that are running for Congress here tonight, Dean Browning and uh, Matt Conley. So they're here, and they'll be addressing us as the year goes on. I'm sure there's a third candidate that's also running, and I hear from her, I'm sure, as well. But uh, just wanted to thank everybody and give you that bit of uh, information, and we'll, we'll move forward at this point. Um, President Donald Trump accomplishments. Um, couldn't be a more appropriate person to put this forward to us than uh, who's going to come forward, Tony Sameo, our vice chair of our, our, county, of our uh, Tea Party here. He was a driving force from the Trump campaign before the primary, and what he accomplished in that period of time was absolutely amazing, as he was the coordinator for five congressional districts to get 250,000 cards to polls across five congressional districts and coordinate a tremendous effort. So he's been engaged with the Trump campaign. I think he told me once that he was hoping that Trump would run all, run all the way back like in 2008, so there couldn't be a better person to come forward today and tell us about what we're going to talk about tonight, which is Trump's accomplishments, and then go forward with what we're going to do in 2020 to make sure that he becomes a, a re-elected president. So. So three years ago, we were made a promise by a then candidate, uh, Donald J. Trump, and uh, here's was cut on tape, so I'm going to play it for you. From this day forward, a new vision will govern our land. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. And the forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never we will bring back our jobs. We will bring back our borders. We will bring back our wealth. And we will bring back our dreams. Do not allow anyone to tell you that it cannot be done. No challenge can match the heart and fight and spirit of America. We will not fail. January 20, 2017, as the day the people became the rulers of this nation again. So, instead of reading out the hundreds and hundreds of accomplishments that Donald Trump has had in the past three years, I decided to just have him scroll as I'm talking to you. And I'm actually not even going to mention most of them because uh, maybe we just stages. 
Um, I'm not going to mention most of them because we all know them. We all watch Hannity and all those other Fox News programs and um, etc. So I'm going to tell you a story. I am the member of the Roosevelt Democratic Club in Danielsville, Pennsylvania. I am not a Democrat. As a matter of fact, the majority of the members there are not Democrats either. <laughs> Uh, but, I was sitting there one day, drinking a tasty beverage. <laughs> and across the bar from me was this older gentleman, uh, who took it upon himself to start talking politics in a democratic club. <laughs> so, he said, Obama had the best economy we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my eyes started twitching a little, and uh, I just sat there and I listened, and I'm like, yeah, it's a lot, whatever. So then he says, uh, Trump's economy's horrible. I can't believe this. This is the, we have, we have an idiot for president. Oh. Hasn't accomplished anything. So I'm going to finish his little rant. And I said, I'm sorry, did I just hear you saying what you heard, what you said? And he said, yeah, it's horrible, the economy's horrible, we're about to go into a recession, the stock market's going to crash, oh my god, the sky's going to fall, the hair is going to be on fire, people are going to be running around in circles, not knowing where the water is. So I said to him, and what I am now going to ask you to do is, if you see yourself in a situation like this, it's not an argument anymore at this point. It's more of a pointing out what the accomplishments actually are and contrast them with the previous eight years, which were, in my opinion, horrible. Mm -hmm. So I let him finish and I said, actually, I find it ex ex extremely funny that you're saying that the past eight years were an incredible economy when the highest pointed points that the stock market had gotten under Obama was 15,000. And now we have hit records continuously for the past three years. And we are now at 27, about to hit 28. It was before we actually hit 28. And the economy is about to go into a recession. So 15,000 points on the stock market, and my 401k not doing very well is a good economy. But now when it's almost 30,000 points, and my 401k, I could retire at 57, that's a horrible economy. Makes perfect sense to me, mister. <laughs> So by now, everybody at the bar was looking at me. <laughs> and I uh, went on to say, what about the $150 billion that were on pallets that were sent on a private jet to Iran? That never happened. So that's fake news. And that's when other people at the bar started chiming in. <laughs> so they started saying, wait, no, that's not fake news. That happened. There's pictures of it. There's pictures of the airplane. There's pictures of the pallets. And he then started trying to interrupt people and said, excuse me, no, no, no. We didn't interrupt you. So please listen to what we have to say to you in return. And he says, I don't talk politics in bars. <laughs> And that was the end of the conversation. He literally, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't engage anymore. He was done. My point being, you can't argue with people. We have to present them with facts, and we have to catch them in the trap that they set for themselves, because eventually they will be caught in the trap that they set for themselves, because they are just regurgitating this mental midget talking point that they're being told to say to people. Why should Trump be impeached? Which, by the way, they're now drafting the uh, impeachment proceedings. Articles of impeachment, they're going in. Um, because he goes on Twitter. <laughs> because he called the president of Ukraine. When, actually, I'm gonna divert a little bit. So, 
So the news now is that Trump's going to get impeached, right? So Congress is writing articles of impeachment, and it's going to go to the Senate for trial. And, uh, yeah, make it possible. Uh, okay, no, I'm, just I'm getting it cut off by another video, so, so you know. Um, so anyway, so uh, articles of impeachment is going to go to the Senate. The Senate has a trial. The trial means that the president is going to have lawyers to present his case. Those lawyers can call anybody to testify. Anybody, including Biden, Hillary Clinton, all of her little helpers. Yeah. All of them. Anybody in the deep state. They can be called in front of the Senate and they will have to answer every single question or else they'll be perjuring themselves and they will go to jail for hopefully a very long time. So. Let that leak happen. I believe that's why Trump released the actual transcript and declassified it. And I believe that's why he has goaded these people to go as far as they have gone. And they are digging themselves a hole that they will not be able to get themselves out of, hopefully. Hopefully. So with that, I will let the credits continue to roll. If you want to see all of them in detail, they are, these are actually all links and to news stories on a website called magapill.com. M-A-G-A-P-I-L-L.com. Please feel free to share it with your friends and family on Facebook. I'm sure that they will enjoy it. Christmas dinner. <laughs> if you missed them at Thanksgiving, get them at Christmas. That's what I always say. So like I said, I'm gonna let the uh, the accomplishments scroll, and I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and a Happy New Year. Great to you. The most people working, almost 160 million, in the history of our country. We just got the biggest tax and regulation cuts in the history of our country. We have the highest stock market in the history of our country. We created more than six million new jobs. And we're building a strong border against so much you have no idea. We have the best and newest military that we've ever had almost totally rebuilt from the depleted military that I inherited. I've just signed the 124th federal district judge. So we have all of this, the best economy, best market, best military, best VA, best everything, and much, much more. Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> uh, uh, I can speak to that. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. So we have some additional announcements here. We have Valley Tea Party is in the fight to re-elect President Trump, right? That's what we've been saying. So we decided to develop an advertising plan and doing all we can to elect President Trump. Ads will run on multiple platforms, including radio, local TV, print, mobile apps, and digital billboards depending on the amount of money we raise. So to do donate, Brian, see Brian? <laughs> Brian loves to take your money. <laughs> Our mail the form at your table, there's forms on the table. Our goal is to raise $12,000. So in addition to what we have in the funds already. There we go.
financing forms, I'm sorry, are on the table. Alternately, you can pay uh, Brian at the back tuck table before you leave tonight. Also, if you know pro-Trump business owners, please talk with them. And this is an important point. You know, so many people are afraid of having their name on something because of the violence that they have put upon us. Well, I keep saying we've got to stop being afraid, but it's legitimate concern, especially for a business owner who doesn't want to necessarily not only put themselves in personal jeopardy, but also maybe their business. Because of the way this is structured, they can legally give us money that doesn't show up on a report up to $5,000. So that's an important thing to say. We, we are in a, engaged in a pro-Trump, support the agenda, re-elect President Trump effort, and we're full board, and we're going to do whatever we can. And these business owners that want this to happen, but are afraid necessarily to tie their name, they can help us funnel, not funnel, but direct that money in a legal way through our fund that doesn't put them in jeopardy. So if you know those type of business owners, let, let them know about what we're doing here. And a lot of you are probably going, and I know a lot of you have heard about it, and I know some of us are even going to be there and volunteering on that day, but the Trump rally, December 10th, um, transportation at this point is unavailable, but um, you can still feel free to go out. Um, my experience having gone to, I don't know how many of those rallies, even if you don't get a ticket online, you, they don't ever collect those tickets. That's just the mechanism that they use. So you can go out and wait in line. If you're going to go, even whether you have a ticket or not, make sure you get there real early because you're going to be What's real? sadly disappointed if you're not there many hours ahead of time. But I'm sure you'll see a lot of uh, people from our own group here if you're going out. And be safe and God bless you if you do go out because that's a, it's a, it's a great thing to experience at the holiday season of Trump rally. So we'll take any audience questions now. I don't know, did Tony leave at this point? Or? Okay. Um, can we have somebody? Uh, What's real world? Uh, okay. Bill, Bill will do it. Here. Bill, grab one of the other. Put your hands up and he's got another. Microphones, and then as soon as he turns that on, go ahead. Okay. Tom, isn't this a distraction that the Democrats are running to get us away from the FISA report, the AG report, due to come out like any minute? I think so. I think so. And I think, you know, the response to that is you watch this news and you see it, whether you're watching mainstream media or whether you're watching Fox News or whether you're just getting your news online or wherever you're listening to your news or hearing this stuff, it's hard not to get upset about it and depressed about it, no reason to. We have truth on our side, we have the right side of history, and this will play out in the way that we want it to as long as we all engage. So, you're right. Go ahead. Got to have the green light on. All the way to the right. Yeah. Testing? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. I have a question. So I'm trying to organize a Second Amendment rally for uh, Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk to you privately about uh, what's involved. Okay, we have, um, just so you know, we have a Second Amendment committee, which is our leading committee within our organization, and we meet at the first Monday of each month at the Borderline Restaurant. Um, Melissa's been chairing that um, committee, and that's been our most successful driver of money as well. But this probably want to talk to Melissa first, and I'll be happy to talk to you as well. Anybody else? Other questions? Yeah. One of the things that I'll say is, I guess we have a hand up here as we're getting the microphone to this man here, is that for those of you who live in Northampton County, Andrew and I are working on a plan as well, which is going to be not directly related to the support of the agenda, but we're going to make sure that we get as many pro-Trump supporting conservatives to engage in the Republican committee because this is the year when you can get on the ballot. So we're going to be communicating with people and we're going to be working to like expand and we, we might try to expand in the Lehigh County as well a little bit, but you know, we're from yeah. Northampton County. So we're going to be doing that and so any of you that want to talk to me about that afterwards as well. If you're not already a committee person, you need to think about engaging in this cycle to get on the committee 
We're not talking about overturning the Republican Party. We're not talking about anything except for engaging to get Trump elected. And the more Republican conservatives that pro-Trump that are on the Republican committee, the better for all of us. So we're not an arm of the Republican Party, but we're going to do that as an independent source. So if anybody lives in North Hampton County, get to me before you leave tonight, or Andrew. All right, who had the mic? Hi. I'm a sidewalk counselor at uh, Downtown Women's Center. And the downtown what center? <clears throat> downtown Women's Center, okay. which is actually has a Bethlehem address. We're over by Wegmans in Bethlehem. Okay. It's either the third or fourth largest amount of babies that are people and babies that are murdered each year. About twenty eight hundred. We need people out there. You don't have to sidewalk council if you don't want to. Just be there pray. We know from the movie, if you didn't see it, Unplanned, from uh, Abby Johnson, who was one of the directors, or one of the, um, the um, she was a manager for Planned Parenthood. She ran a Planned Parenthood. She said that up to 75% of the women do not have the abortion if they see people out there praying. Please, there's only a handful of people that come out there. Yeah, and I'll say that there is something called, uh, I forget, it's Precious Infant uh, Group that's uh, through the Catholic Church, and they have a mass at Notre Dame Church, um, Catholic Church on Catasauqua Road at 8 o'clock on the second Saturday of each month, 8 a.m., and then after mass, they actually do a little pilgrimage and they pray the rosary, so obviously not everybody's Catholic, but even if they're not Catholic, if that's your issue, that's also something you can look into because that is where they go. That's that's called helpers of God's precious. Yes, it's, yes. It's, it's a good thing, but like you said, it's once a month. It's once a month. But that's there, it's a start. We need people there. They're killing babies like three or four days a week. Yes. And and I'm out there. I, I see what's happening. I've been doing this for a number of years now. I'm out there three days a week. There's uh, just a handful of people. Hey, you know what matters if you don't have life? All this other stuff is. Doesn't mean anything. You're so right. Please see me. I'll tell you when to be there. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, hi there. Uh, in um, 2004, we had George W. Bush come to the Lehigh Valley, to the Lehigh Park, where I and my wife were there seeing him. We, we got close. To in, two, in 2008, McCain, John McCain, and Sarah Payne came to the Lehigh Valley. And we are university. We were there. Sarah Palin stole the show. What will it take to get Donald Trump to come to Lehigh Valley? I know there's a lot of people that understand the significance of the Lehigh Valley. We are the third largest metropolitan area in the state. We've been identified, especially Northampton County, as one of the ten counties in the country that are so pivotal to what happens in the national election. That's why I think it's an absolute disgrace that the state Republican Party did not support a challenge to the election because I believe that was nothing but a beta test to make sure that they could disrupt the 2020 election. And Northampton County is battleground central. There's everybody that I can think of is reaching out to anybody who we can think of to let them know that the Lehigh Valley is so key. I know why it didn't happen in 2016, and you can blame that reprehensible Charlie Dent for that. But he's gone, he, and we just got to keep fighting to get him here, but whether we get him here or not, we got to do everything we can with the within what we can do here on the ground. I think if we can get him here, it will could make a huge difference. And I think that two of the candidates that are running for Congress here are going to try real hard to get him here too, especially whoever wins the primary. And I'm sure that would be a help because this seventh congressional district is key to everything. So Matt Conley and Dean Browning. You got some task ahead of you, but you want it to where you got to get Trump here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm a member of the LCRC and the Lehigh County Women's Republican Committee, and uh, both of our uh, groups want to coordinate with the Tea Party because they see that you guys are innovative and and passionate about the uh, re-election of Trump. So um, we really have to get off our ducks and get together and form like massive groups today. There was a lady that called in on um, Rush Limbaugh today and said that she thinks that we should all do what the Democrats do and what the liberals do and just get out there and 
don't be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. This hat, I love when I wear it to Starbucks. It's, it's the most fun I have. So we all have to coordinate with everybody, just join forces, all work together. And um, you are right about that. That's why we started those glass muffs of Trump in 2016. That's why we're going to continue those. So you know, I approached the uh, chairman of the Lehigh County Republican Committee and also the North Hampton County Republican Committee, and I said to them that without a doubt, I would like them to meet with me and the leadership of the Tea Party so that we can meet together to discuss where we can legally coordinate and communicate because there's no reason because the disaster what happened out of Lehigh County in 2016 cannot happen again. Mm. And they all agreed, so we're waiting to see if they're actually going to follow through. But regardless of whether that those county parties, and the candid truth is Northampton County is much more pro-Trump than Lehigh County is in its leadership, but I think there's been a change since four years ago, so hopefully that'll be true. But regardless of whether they join in with us or not, we're going to follow, we're going to march, and we're going to do this. And hopefully, the leadership of the party will communicate with us and coordinate with us as much as we can. Of course, we have different functions. But to, as much as we can work together, we should, and you're right. And, and I've taken that step already to communicate with them and ask them, and they both said yes, but we'll see if it actually happens. Um, I got one here and then one here, and I think that could wrap it up there. Back here, we have time. Okay. All right, go ahead. I am Perry Long. I am a uh, committee person in Lehigh County, and the, the one key that I find is, I mean, as a committee person, we have to, uh, we're, we're boots on the ground, we got to get the votes out, and we need help, and this group here, it's not a matter of coordination, it's a matter of, of uh, members of your group being willing to volunteer, either to become committee people, or if, it, you know, or, uh, if there's uh, all the slots filled in your voting districts, help the committee people there to get door to door and get, and get the vote out. I can tell you that for the last however many years we've been saying that to them and they've rejected it time and time again. They have. So, I mean, you're not wrong. And we continue to say that all of our members here, it's two different organizations, it's two different functions, but if you're a Republican, and you live in an area where there's not a Republican committee person already on the books or looking, you should look to run or write your name in to get elected to the county committee. And to the extent that you also want to work within the county committee, even if you're not a committee person, obviously I would encourage that, but that's that's something that if, I'm... If, if, any, if anybody here tonight is interested in uh, either becoming a committee person or helping a committee person see me, Write your name. I brought a uh, tablet along. Write your name, your address. We'll check out to see if there's a vacancy in your district. Right. Or, or you can email me. From Lehigh County. If you live in Lehigh County, you want to talk to him, there. he's there right there. So. Email me at perrylong49 at gmail.com. Good, thank you. Okay. Stand up. Who are you? Ditto, if anyone wants to be a Northampton County Committee person, there's 306 spots. January 28th, January 28th starts the process. And basically, a committee person is a liaison to your precinct. You're supposed to communicate with your um, local Republicans to make sure that they know who is on the ballot, answer their questions, get the maps and tea ballots. So if you're in Northampton County and you're interested, see either Tom Carroll Tom um, can't be owner myself. And that's exactly what I was saying before. It does start, it's not that complicated, but it takes a little bit of knowing how the system works. We know how the system works and we're more than willing. We're gonna reach out, we're gonna have some events and we're gonna get people involved and we're, we're gonna do this. So, one more. You have, you have experience going to these rallies. Two, 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 okay. No, I'm just trying to find out how early is early. <laughs> going to the rally close to your mouth, please. What do you mean? You have experience going to these rallies. Oh, I've heard uh, now that they're even worse than they're not worse than the set in that sense. But when I went to all the rallies that I went, that were all starting at seven o'clock at night, and they opened the doors at four. 
I got there around 10 to 11 a.m. that morning and waited in line about six hours. But of course, I wanted to be on the floor in front. So the problem though is if you wait too long to get there, at some point there will be, historically there's tens of, or thousands of people who will never get in. If you want to be one of the people that get inside, you probably have to be there no later than like 11 o'clock in the morning. 10. 10 or 11, I would think, but that's just a guess. And I just wanted to suggest that if we're all getting out early to start campaigning for Trump, along with other candidates, when you meet enthusiastic Trump supporters, they already know what's going down in terms of the challenges for the Republican Party and for Trump specifically. And it would be my suggestion, I hope that you guys agree with me, that if you meet us, so people who are enthusiastic about Trump, ask them if they can host a party and one of us can come out and talk to them with a sheet of all of his a couple of accomplishments and they can invite people they know provided they're, they're, provided they're inviting people who are bona fide so we don't get people crashing. But um, that was just a suggestion. Okay. And um, tonight, I was hoping that um, Andres Weller would be here tonight, but, and I think he was supposed to, but then he had class. Um, just so you know, he's, uh, they, the Trump campaign has been geared up. They actually helped us run the local elections a little bit, but he's not here, but James is here. So if anybody, you know, in the break or whatever during the time, if you see him waving, you want to talk to him about what the Trump campaign is already doing and try to sign up to them, you know, talk to James. So we'll wrap it up now. Thank you. Just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. more slides. Okay. I, yeah, here we go. I didn't pay attention again, and I'm in trouble again. All right. <laughs> All right. Yes, like as always, as you know, we need the donations to help continue to pay for the room and everything. The buckets are on the table as always. Be sure to cast, use the chips, as we say. Special thanks to the Wilson Republican Club for sponsoring tonight's coffee, and that's a great thing. And uh, any current, uh, are there any current uh, Wilson Republican Club members here today? I know Andy here is. I know Andrew is. I know I am. All right. So it's uh, great people, great food, great prices. If you'd like to join, please stay Andrew for a membership form. They have great food. They have they actually on Sunday. If you're looking for a place to go to breakfast after church. They do breakfast at the club there in Wilson as well, so it's a great time. I run into several of my friends there some Sundays. So there's the application. Andrew has them in the back. Special thanks to our Christmas party sponsor. Sponsor names will be displayed on the screen during the party. You can still be a sponsor. Just complete the form on the table and bring it to the technician table up front. And now, now it's party time. Now it's party time. Hey. Saying, God bless you all. We'll be back to do the 50-50 uh, raffle in the end. So thanks a lot. Enjoy. How you doing, my friend? Good. 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 Good.